I have this idea of taking an astro photo with my phone as a selfie. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work. Let's see. Before we get into this, guys, I'm going to let you know that over on the website there, there's a lot of presets there for mobile photography. And if you want them for free, keep on watching this video. There's going to be a code word that comes down on the bottom here. All you need to do is comment that code word, and I'm going to pick someone who comments it correctly, put a comment below it, and I'm going to send you all the presets for free. Like so many other videos that I do, the ideas generally come from the comments on other videos. And I took some photos of a tractor and someone said, hey, can you do this with a person? And I'm like, I don't know, you've got to stand still for a long time. And that's because most phones that you're going to shoot the night sky with is going to have a minimum exposure time of about 30 seconds, certainly for the iPhone and many of the Androids if you don't go into the Pixel stuff, but it won't work with the Pixel stuff. It's definitely gonna work with the iPhone though. And this is because most phones are going to have a shutter speed or an exposure time of 30 seconds. And I know that most people can't stand still for 30 seconds. Even when you're dead set sober, you can't stand still for 30 seconds. And the reason I say that is I'm kind of known for my astrophotography with weddings. I'll put a couple there, put a galactic core there, sensational photos when they're not drunk, but most people are going to have a few sherbets at their reception, and they're not going to be able to stand still for that 30 seconds. Doesn't matter how well I do it, some people just can't do it. But I can get around it by using a strobe. 30 seconds is a long time to stand perfectly still. Even moving that little bit is going to blow your photo. You see, if we use just a regular torch to take these photos and light the subject with the torch, it's an amount of time that it's moving across the subject and the subject will end up being blurry because you've got to breathe, you've got to move a little bit. There's just no way around it. So I'm using the strobe. This is the Godox V1S. This is the same flash that I use on top of my cameras when I'm shooting weddings and, well, shooting anything with the DSLR, really. So this here, it doesn't have to be this one. There's a couple of things that are very important about this flash. And that is you're going to want some sort of diffusing on the, on the flash. This one here is just all magnetic and it's very handy, very, very handy. Um, and the second thing you want is a manual mode. Now most flashes are going to have manual modes. These are sometimes known as flashes, sometimes known as speed lights. It doesn't matter what one you've got. It doesn't have to synchronize to your phone. It's irrelevant for what we're doing here. But through this menu here, you need to set it to a manual setting and bring that power down, the intensity down as low as it can go because we're going to be shooting pretty close to the subject. I think it'll work. At three o'clock in the morning with Nigel, no friends, no one's here to help me, so I'm gonna try and do this on my own. I'm shooting with the iPhone, so I'm going to use the watch, the Apple watch, to set the camera off. I'll set the camera up first on the phone and then just use the watch to set the shutter off. Um, if you've got any other sort of phone, just set a timer if you like, and it'll work well enough for you. The reason I like doing this is that you can compose the photo and watching your, um, watch to see how you sit in the photo. So I like doing it that way. If you've got someone with you, well, it's not that hard. Just put a light on you and move the camera around. It's dead set easy when there's two people. And what I'm planning to do is actually hold the flash off to the side here, just out of the frame, or maybe a little bit low in the frame and shoot it that way. It may work, it may not. If it doesn't work, I've got a backup plan. So I'm using the Explorer um, tripod. This is my favorite tripod. I'll link it down the bottom there. I'm using the MagSafe holder from Explorer as well. I'll just open the phone up open up the camera and just set it on there. There we go, it's done. What I need to do now though is work, I'll take a photo, night mode photo, um, 30 seconds. If you can't find 30 seconds on your phone, it's because it's not on a tripod. Put it on a tripod, put it into night mode, go to the maximum, it's gonna show you 10 seconds. After a little bit of time, it's gonna show you 30 seconds. That's it, we don't need to do anything else with the iPhone. We're gonna hit the shutter button and take a photo. I know where the galactic core is, but we won't get into that tonight. 30 seconds is done, photo's done. Looks pretty bloody good to me. Um, the shedding and stuff in the foreground, in, in the lower part of the frame, that's no big deal. I'm gonna sit myself now on the left hand or right hand side of this frame, so I'm underneath the galactic core a little bit, and we'll just see how it works. So I'm gonna get that flash, hold it off to the frame, hold it off to the side, hit it while I'm in the shot, and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna turn this light off on the phone, hit the arrow, Go to um, night mode, scroll all the way up, 10 seconds, there's 30 seconds. Got the flash in hand, and I'm just going to turn the modeling light on, on the flash, open up my watch, and it will synchronize. There we go. I'm gonna go over this side, I think it was this side. 
and turn that modeling light back off. I'm in the frame, I know I'm in the frame. I'll put that one behind me, hold it out to the side, hit the shutter button, three, two, one, it's gonna go. And there's the flash. Now I've got to stay here now for 30 seconds. I don't have to be dead set still. It's not gonna matter, the end, it's not gonna be the end of the world if I move a little bit, but I don't wanna move until that 30 seconds is up because I'm gonna have stars in the way, in behind me here. What I'll do, I'll move now. I know that frame's not finished and you'll see what I mean. That looks like it might have worked. There you go, so I'm in the frame. I moved a bit early. Oh, the flash is also in the frame and that's no good, I don't want that. But you can see stars on my hoodie there. What I've also noticed with this is that it's really blown out. This is going to work. It's just not going to work the way I thought it was going to work immediately. So I'm gonna use another bit of kit. The other bit of kit that I use, so this is the flash, is this. This is, this is a remote trigger that I use. So when I do off camera flash, I can set the flash over to a side, put this on top of the camera, and this will fire this remotely. And it works really well. And I thought, this here is in the frame still, when I just took that photo. And I wanna be a little bit further away from the camera. So I'm gonna use this to fire this tonight. The settings are exactly the same. Most flashes will do this. If you're gonna buy a flash, just check to make sure it can have a remote. In fact, buy a remote with it. Some of them, some remotes that you have are just a push button. There's no settings that you can change, it's just push button and you do all the settings on this. This particular one, you can do all the settings on this to save you walking to wherever the flash is. So I'm gonna put this on top of my camera bag down there put this in my pocket, fire the flash from a distance, and I think it'll work well. Let's see. Just quickly, the other thing that you may have noticed is that I've got the tripod really low, and it's really low because I'm shooting up into the night sky, and I'm trying to get a photo of myself in front of that galactic core. So I'm tall, I need to be taller, like a three points if you like, the camera, the subject, and the galactic core. So if this was his high and shooting me, I'm not gonna get the galactic core, but if I'm shooting up, and I'm here, I'm not gonna get me, so I need to get those three things in a reasonably good line, so I've got it a little bit lower. Anyway, let's try this with the remote and see if it works. I think it will. After seeing the results of the first one, I think this will work. I'll just turn this light off. So the settings on the camera is exactly the same. In fact, there's really no settings on the, um, on the iPhone, but anyway, it's sitting there, and I move over here, Checking out the watch. Now I think I want it to be on this side. I'm pretty sure. Now I probably want to face the light a little bit. Like that. Now I'll turn that modeling light off. It should be dark here in a second. That's off. Just test that flash, that works. Now I'm gonna hit the shutter on the iPhone. Now I'm not gonna move I'll hit the flash. I think I'm facing the wrong way in the frame, so the composition of this is gonna suck. And I'm just gonna stand here for that 30 seconds. Like I said, you don't need to be dead set still, but you do need to be stopping those stars coming through the frame after you move. So we're nearly done. It's gotta be close now. I should have set a timer. I feel like a shag on a rock now, not doing anything. I'm happy that'll be done. <clears throat> Let's go have a look. And it was done. Well, I'll be damned, that worked. That worked really, really well. Worked a lot better than what I thought it was going to work. Halfway through that photo, my neighbor decided he's gonna start milking his cows, turn his big floodlight on, so I had two sources of light and it caught a little bit of movement. But I'm absolutely confident that you can do this with a strobe or a flashlight or a speed light, not a flashlight, a speed light or a flash. Something that's gonna give you one, one, was with this um, one 128th power. It's going to shoot incredibly fast, freeze that motion, and give you a ripper selfie. All right, guys, that's it for today. Catch you later.